when we came into the gene therapies, we, we approached it, I think, a little bit differently than, than many others. We started actually with the diseases. It began with a list of almost a thousand rare diseases, and we narrowed that down initially to about 15 rare diseases. We've now expanded it to several dozen. And our criteria was, you know, is there significant unmet need? Is the disease amenable to a gene therapy approach? And if so, we then went out and scoured the landscape trying to find the best technologies that we could. That, for instance, brought us these nationwide children's programs in Batten disease. Um, there, we're delivering it intrathecally. We have some very exciting data in patients treated out now well more than a year, um, showing that we seem to be, particularly in the younger children, fundamentally changing the course of the disease. And so for us, treating you know, a fatal brain disease in children and being able to change the course to provide hope, real hope, where there wasn't any before, is, is tremendously rewarding. A lot more work for us to do there as we expand those programs. Much of the portfolio that you talked about, our Pompeii, our Febre, our CDKL5 deficiency disorder, all of those programs are in partnership with Dr. Jim Wilson and the University of Pennsylvania and the Gene Therapy Center of Excellence there. And the core of what we're doing that's very distinct from what many others are doing is our expertise for our science team is in protein engineering, in glycobiology, understanding the carbohydrate structures around these proteins to ensure proper targeting of whatever the deficient protein may be. What we've been doing with the Wilson Lab is to combine our expertise, not just in rare disease drug development globally, it's that, but we're actually taking our core science expertise in protein engineering to be able to design DNA sequences inserted then into transgenes, combining that with novel next generation therapies coming out of the Wilson lab in gene therapy vector targeting, vectors, capsids that can reduce immunogenicity, um, gene therapy programs, vectors that can be more easily, more cost effectively manufactured. So we're really looking at next generation gene therapy technologies uh, and that to us is something very exciting.